Hello and hi everyone! Did you ever wonder how an object like a black hole, neutron star or active galaxy produces light? And how fast it is moving and what elements it is composed of? So, for this video, we will be discussing on how elements can be identified. But first, let me explain to you the uses of line spectrum in astronomy. From spectral lines, astronomers can determine not only the element, but the temperature and density of that element in the star. Line spectrum allows astronomers to study the interstellar medium, ISM, which consists of gas and dust, mostly hydrogen and helium. In order to find out the line spectrum of the element in the stars, astronomers use the techniques of spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the study of the interaction between matter and electromagnetic radiation which is one of the fundamental tools which scientists use to study the universe. A spectroscope is a device that measures the spectrum of light. Early version of a spectroscope had a slit, a prism, and a screen with markings to indicate various wavelengths of frequencies. Later versions were calibrated to electronic detectors. Now, let's see the history of the light spectrum. Isaac Newton discovered that light from the sun was composed of multiple frequencies. In 1666, by using a prism to break sunlight into its color complement and then recombining them with a second prism, he showed that the light coming from the sun consists of continuous array of colors. Until then, some believed that the colors shown by a prism were generated by prism itself and were not interscript to the sunlight. By making observation of a variety of objects, Gustav Kuchow's law can be put into modern form as an opaque object emit a continuous spectrum. A glowing gas has an emission spectrum and a source with a continuous spectrum which has a cooler gas in front of it give an absorption spectrum. But did you guys know what actually line spectrum are? Line spectrum is a series of discrete lines with certain wavelengths. Each line corresponds to a specific wavelength or frequency. A gas of certain element is filled into a gas discharge tube. An electric spark is passed through the gas in the tube. Energy supplied is then absorbed by the electron and causes them to be promoted from the ground states to higher energy levels. These electrons are unstable at their accepted states then fall to lower energy levels and emit light at particular wavelengths. The image of light forms are called line spectrum. <laughs> now, let's go to the most interesting part. As we all know, line spectrum is widely used to identify different types of elements such as hydrogen. Hydrogen, the simplest but the most abundant element in the universe, is the most studied element. Therefore, let us learn more about the formation of hydrogen line spectrum. When hydrogen gas at low pressure is electrically discharged in a vacuum tube, a pink light is emitted. When the light is viewed through a spectroscope, it is seen to be composed of a few groups of lines, each with a particular wavelength. Energy supplied is then absorbed by the electron of hydrogen atoms, cause the electron to move from ground states to higher energy level. At higher energy level, hydrogen atom is said to be in excited state. When the electron fall back to lower energy levels, Radiant energies, photons, are emitted in the form of light at particular frequency or wavelength. 
since we have a lot of hydrogen atoms in the tube, many lines produce. Each line correspond to different wavelengths from different energy levels. The lines are classified into several spectral series. The Lehman series is the wavelength in the ultraviolet region, where the electron falling from the higher energy level to the lower energy level and equal to 1. The electron step drop from higher energy level to the lower energy level and equal to 2 give rise to the Balmer series, which is in the visible light area. The Pascal series is the wavelength in the infrared spectrum, resulting from electrons falling from higher energy levels into the N equal to 3 level. The bracket series is the wavelength in the infrared spectrum, resulting from electrons falling from higher energy levels into the N equal to 4 level. Balmer series is used to identify hydrogen atom because it is the only region that is visible. The red line at the right is visible light and the two leftmost lines are considered to be ultraviolet as they have wavelengths less than 400 nanometers. In order to find out the energy level positions and wavelengths of hydrogen, Rydberg's equation is used. This equation predicts the position and wavelength of any lines in a given series. Based on the equation, lambda is the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted in vacuum, while Rh is the Rydberg constant, approximately 1.097 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7 per meter. The N2 is the higher energy level, while N1 is the lower energy level. For example, to calculate the wavelength of light emitted when the electron in hydrogen atom falls from the fourth energy level to the second energy level, Rydberg's equation is used. The wavelength emitted is 486 nanometer, which is green in color. One over lambda is equal to in a bracket 1.0967 times 10 to the power of negative 2 nano per meter. In a bracket 1 over 2 square minus 1 over 4 square. 1 over lambda is equal to 2.0564625 times 10 to the power of negative 3 nano per meter. Lambda is equal to 486.3 nanometer. We can conclude that an image of colored lines of light is formed in optical spectroscopy with each line representing one of the frequencies in the line spectrum. As we have learned, Hydrogen is the simplest and the easiest element that can be used to study the line spectrum. Therefore, we should appreciate the ones who discovered line spectrum that has to be one of the most important discoveries in science.